Morning, everyone. How are you? Good. Fantastic. It's great to see you all. Great to be here in Darlington with Peter at this leading health and life sciences for people, right? And we can do it in areas like COPD, respiratory conditions. We can do it in areas like frailty. What you can hold me accountable for is, like, what did you do about it? You know, what I did as soon as I knew about the situation was appoint somebody independent, looked at it, got the advice, and then acted pretty decisively um, to move on, because that's what I think all of you deserve uh, from me and from, from government. Uh, this week will mark 100 days of your premiership. Here you are talking about the NHS but your tenure in number 10 has been more characterised about sleaze than sound government. Are you frustrated or furious even about Nadim Zahawi's conduct and the damage it's done to you personally and your government? Thank you. So, look, on, on, on the second one, right, I, you know, what I've done is follow a process, which is the right process. Integrity is really important. To me, all of you guys want to see that governments run properly, that it's run with integrity, and there's accountability when people don't behave in a way that they should or when something doesn't go right, and that's what we've done. So we have an independent advisor. That's what the government has. So it's not, you know, it's not, it's not me who's doing it. And what I asked when all these questions started coming to light about uh, Nadim Zahawi, you know, I asked the independent advisor to get to the bottom of it and to provide me with the facts and then on the basis of the facts, which he did relatively quickly over the past of last week, I was able to make a very quick decision that it was no longer appropriate for Nadeem Zawi to continue in government, and that's why he's no longer there. Right, and um, I'm glad you asked about uh, about it. It would have been odd if we managed to get through this session without uh, talking about it, right? And that many of you here will be thinking about it, many of you here will be members of your union, right? So I can tell you that, right? So overall, the pie is as big as it's ever been, and in the circumstances was was prioritized. But then within that pie, we've got to figure out well, what's the right balance between, I don't want to put any of your taxes up. Right? That's what it comes down to. Right? I doubt any of you would thank me if I came here and said, great, well, I've put up all your taxes. Right? I don't want to do that because it's tough enough at home as it is at the moment for all of you with your bills and everything else. So figuring out how to pay for these things is part of my job. And I think we've kind of, we're where we are with taxes at the moment, we can't put them up anymore, right? And we need to be getting them down. So that's what constrains me on one end. And then the other thing is inflation, right? What is the number one challenge all of you have day to day at home? It's like every time you open a bill, it's like, oh my gosh, what is going on? The most important thing that I need to do for all of you, right? Not just everyone working in the NHS, not just our nurses, but everyone in the country, the most important thing is to halve inflation. Right? The thing that's going to make the biggest difference to all of your lives and everyone else's life if by the end of this year, right, bills are not going up at the rate that they have been over the past year. Because that is the thing that is eating into all of your quality of life, all of your standard of living. That's the thing that says, great, I can't go on holiday this year, or I can't buy these presents, or I can't go out for this meal, I can't do any of these things, because everything is just going up and up and up. I've got to get a grip of that for all of you. It is the most important thing. And if we don't do that, we won't be able to afford anything in the future through this. But look, I, I hear you, right? I hear you, I hear all of you. I've talked to your unions. The health secretary's talking to your unions. We want to find a way through this. I know things are tough, and I know what an incredible job you do. Because inflation is one of these things that every, this is a very young audience, right? So you won't remember. Like, when this goes badly wrong, as it did in the past, in the 1970s, and as I said, everyone here is too young to remember that. But, you know, when this gets wrong, and if we're still talking about high inflation in a year's time, Right? It is going to be awful for all of you. Right? It will be, we won't be able to afford to invest any more in anything. Right? And you, no one will be able to spend money on anything they want because inflation would have just been going up and up and up. An important part of us getting a grip of inflation and halving it is making sure that the government's responsible with its borrowing because if that gets out of control, it makes it worse. And it's about making sure pay settlements are reasonable and fair. So how do we make sure that local pharmacies are sustainable into the future, it's figuring out, well, what more can community pharmacies do? And in the same way I was talking about nurses, if I think about all the things that a pharmacy does today, compared to when I worked in my mum's pharmacy, that has evolved 